Gospel of John, chapter 3. Open your Bibles. We have some Bibles in the, in the, the back of the pew. I would like you to engage with me in a study for tonight. How's that? Would you like that? Amen? I want you to engage with me in a study because what will happen is I will not, uh, uh, in the next 30 minutes or so, I will not uh, finish the, the, 30, uh, the, 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 the story in John chapter 3 because tomorrow I'm going to continue what I'm going to, to discuss. Will that be okay? It's, it's going to be a series. So that I would like you to come tomorrow to worship with us. Amen? Amen. Oh, why are you smiling? Why are you laughing? Huh? Huh? All right. I would like you to come with me today. You know the gospel, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You know the four gospels. They are called the synoptic gospel. They are called synoptic gospel because different disciples of Jesus, some of them were not disciples of Jesus. Some of them were, uh, they just heard about Jesus. Uh, and they were accurately, uh, or they were, uh, faithfully, I'm, I'm saying, recording the events in the life of Jesus. But particularly right now, we have this Johannine Gospel or Johannine Literature. Now, to give you a little bit of, of context here, before we go to John chapter three, in John chapter one, what do we what do we uh, we see there in your in your Bible? Uh, for those of you who have been reading the book of John, what have you been reading? God declared Himself to be he, the, the Word. The Word in 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 Greek, it's it's very significant. It's very Fascinating, uh, fascinating. The Word. Remember in, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3, when in the beginning, in, in the, oh, Genesis, Genesis 1, oh. in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And if you go down to verse 3, when God spoke, there was light, right? So it was His Word who created. And then in John chapter 1, verses 1, He declared, and the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the verses, he declared that he is the Word. In essence, he was creating that he was the Creator God. Amen? Very significant and very amazing. Now, if you go down in verse 14, he said, But this Word, or this Word, became flesh. Like flesh and blood, like, like us. Right? We are flesh. Are you flesh? Uh, how many are, 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 are not flesh? flesh, right? And, and Jesus was like us. As some scholars that I have read and some comments that I have uh, read, he looks like, well, uh, this is some of the, the, uh, some of the scholars that I have read. He looks like a Middle Eastern, specifically he, he points an Iraqi. I said, what? Jesus? Or maybe Jesus is a Filipino. <laughs> or Jesus is an African American. Well, how, how's that? Or G but Jesus was a Jew, right? He was flesh like us, and he said, full of grace and compassion, and he dwelt among us. No, not, not us. We, we are among men. And in, in, in that context, during the time of the Jews, first century, but spiritually among us. You get it? You, you find me? You're following me? And what happens in John chapter chapter 1? We, we go now to John chapter 2. What's the first miracle? Come on, uh, refresh your mind. What's the first chapter? Oh, what's the first miracle in John chapter 2? He was in Galilee. Most of these uh, miracles are found in, in Galilee. So tomorrow I will discuss about what happens when he traveled from Judea to Galilee. Huh? Water to wine. That's what you remember? Water turned to wine. That's correct. What was the event? Let me hear you. Wedding. How many of you here had watched the wedding tip last night or stayed up late? Nobody? Oh, it's all over. I heard it's about 2 billion people who watched it. Ah, 2 billion people. That's 200. A million people watched it. The fascinating wedding of Prince, uh, uh, there's a title there, uh, Duke of Cambridge and Duchess of Cambridge. Prince, Will, uh, Prince William and uh, Princess... Uh, Kate, or Kate, Catherine. Catherine. Wedding! So what, that, that's the happiest time, right? Looking forward to your, how many of you here are, it's your happiest time of your life, you could say. I, it's my happiest time in my life. The wedding, how many of you could, could raise your hand? Nobody? No? See how you should raise your hand. Don't embarrass me here. <clears throat> wedding. And, and just, just, a, just a snapshot of what's happening there. The best wine was served when? The last. The last. The last. 
Usually in the Eastern culture, the best wine, the best wine is offered at the beginning. But because they run out and, and Jesus just came out there and, and just prepared the best wine. Amen? Amen. You know, we're now, I will not go through the, the next uh, few verses. Let's now, let's now go to our main chapter, chapter 3. And I want us to <coughs> read with me if you can, and this is just a, 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 to me this is a, this is the greatest chapter in, in the book of John would you, would you say amen to that? Amen. Why? What's in, birth, in chapter 3 of John? What's there? What's in there? Come on. What's there? Uh, what's the, the famous verse in John chapter 3? 316 is there, but before we go to 316 <laughs> Are you with me? Are you all awake? <laughs> Before we go to verse 16, let's try to understand and try to read through and uh, try to uh, get some pastoral lessons here from the book of John chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. The Bible says, I'm reading from the New King James Version, there was a man of the Pharisees. Mm. I'm, I'm familiar with this. Now, how many of you here knows what are the Pharisees? I you have an idea what's a Pharisee? What is a Pharisee? Uh, anybody? Don't be shy. What's a Pharisee? Religious group. Teachers. Religious group. Who yes. believe that. That you live in what? There's no reason. They believe in what they can do. <laughs> <laughs> there is no resurrection. <laughs> okay. They believe in the law and they believe that they need to be rigid and follow the law. So in essence, they are the legalistic, legalistic. Uh, group of people, all right? And there are other groups in the, uh, in the Jewish, during the time of Jesus, there are major three or four of them, the Pharisees, Sadducees, the Essenes, and the, uh, what's the other one, the Zealots, or the, uh, uh, you remember? All right, but no one focus on the Pharisees. The Pharisees are those people in their outward appearance, they are so holy, and they they, they want to they want to command respect. They, in, in fact, they have bells. Some of them who are so great, they have bells on their on the edge of their. You know how they they wear they. It's not the what we wear right now. We wear a suit and tie. They wear like a garments. Huh? Garments. 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 They they cover like they they don't have pants. They don't have jeans. That time. And then there's that uh, uh, no. bell that is attached to the and to the hem of their garment. And when they walk, you know it's a Pharisee because it's hey, it means that hey, a holy man is passing by. You know, give way. But the problem was during the time of Jesus, the Pharisees are are more of the outward religious people. In their hearts, they are filled with. Mm, Envy, coldness, jealousy, and hatred. And this is exactly what Jesus would like to, to transform in them, right? Amen? Amen. Jesus wants to transform their, heart, their hearts. Now our story is, is who? Who's the uh, protagonist in our story? Nicodemus. You know the story, right? I'm just trying to... Uh, Nicodemus. What happens to Nicodemus? See. You probably heard about the, the great miracles of Jesus in Cana, how Jesus turned the, the, the water into wine and other miracles of, you know, a, a, a man with a withered hand, he was healed, or probably he heard that Jesus was, was just a great rabbi. Could you, could you imagine with me right now? Could you picture it in your mind's eyes? And so this is the picture where, where our story begins. And then the Bible says in verse 2, Oh, he was a ruler, ruler of the Jews. You know, he, he, he occupies a, a great position. In, in verse 2 there, you can read, This man came to Jesus by night and said to him. Now, there's a significant uh, reason why he came to Jesus by night. Why do you think? He could come to Jesus by day. He could have made an appointment. To Jesus. Hey, Jesus, I'd like to have an appointment, a counseling appointment with you on the day. How come he came at night? So others will see him. He is so ashamed to be with Jesus because uh, he, he, he is so ashamed probably of, of, of being identified.